I'm urgent. Building the most powerful immune system using all natural ingredients is critical. VK Platinum and VK Boost are formula broad spectrum of over nutrients, antioxidants, amino acids, and active enzymes, including the highest levels of all natural vitamin C, which optimize the cellular capacity to destroy pathogens. And now joining the VK Platinum team includes Flush Me Out of THC, Sex Mate for Men, Silent Flowers for Women, Lean and Clean for Digestive Health, Bull Gorge for Male Prostate Health, and 10X Boost Optimal Botanical Nutrition Mineralization. To build the most powerful immune system immediately and overall nutrition, go to PlatinumVK.com. My name is Dennis Fro. If you've been involved in an accident, call me and I'll fight for you. I'm not an actor or a celebrity spokesperson. I'm a real trial lawyer and I've appeared before real judges and real juries on behalf of people with serious injuries. So when I say I'll fight for you, I mean it and I'll back it up. If you've been hurt in an automobile or 18-wheeler accident, contact me toll free at 866-529-2444 and I'll fight for your rights. What's up, everybody? This is Uncle D. Look, tonight we're coming back at you with the second part of the series where uh, we're talking about black fatherhood, generally speaking. And so um, here's the thing, man. I'm going to show you a clip. Tiger Woods and his father. Michael Jordan and his father. Michael Jordan and his father again. Kobe Bryant and his dad. Patrick Mahoney's and his father, Matthew Knowles and Beyonce, the Jackson Five and Joe Jackson, LeVar Ball and his boys, all three of which are NBA players, Serena Williams and their father, Mr. Williams. So my question to you guys is, why is it that black fathers don't get any credit for their famous successful children? If the media has to choose between giving credit for successful black children to their fathers, teaching and time and raising, they rather just not speak on it at all. Now, every now and then they'll talk about, well, you know, Tiger Woods' dad, uh, he, uh, you know, he, uh, he, he contributed a little bit, but you never hear about Patrick Mahoney's dad, who was a, a major league pitcher. How do you think that boy knew, learned how to throw that ball like that? You know, they never talk about, and, and here's the thing, if they do talk about him, especially people like LeVar Ball, there's always so much negativity associated with this brother. This man, okay, has three sons who are active NBA players, all right? Who else do you know has come close to something like that on major teams? We have what? Archie Manning. Archie Manning is in, the, he has two sons that played in the NFL but three sons that play in the NBA at the same time, LeVar Ball should be, uh, uh, he, he should be considered father of the NBA, father of the year, because he coached those boys up and made them success, success stories. Throughout all the things that we have to deal with, this black man was able to do that, but nobody wants to give him credit for it. And I, my question to you guys is why is that? Why is it that we allow the media to pick our heroes for us? Why can't LeVar Ball be our hero? Who wouldn't want three sons in the NBA straight out of high school, multimillionaires? Who wouldn't want that? Tell me why. Why is this happening? Why is it that black fathers, as successful as they be, these men are crafting millionaires out of nothing? As you guys know, most of the time I'm on national TV. It's only recently that I decided, well, let me go ahead and invest in this YouTube um thing because i think this is where our people are you know and i want especially black men and i want you brothers 
you know, I want you to know that you have a voice. Wherever I am, I'm taking what you say. These things that we talk about, I take it straight to the television. You know, I, I take it straight, straight to straight to prime time. So what I want to do is I want you guys to chime in. I want you, what can we begin to do? In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to determine who our heroes are going to be. So what are we going to do, fellas? I need you guys to go ahead, jump on in. Let's have this conversation. I'm glad you chimed in. We need your voice. We appreciate your voice, man. Tell me why black fathers don't get any credit for their famous and successful children. Tell me why. This really is, I'll say it again, it really is a, I'll, I mentioned this before, a mimetic cultural war to control men. Okay. And, and men often identify when they get older, more so as they grow up into manhood, manhood with their fathers. Right. Um. I do notice often when men hit like maybe about their twenties, mid twenties, they start to heavily identify with their fathers inside and defend their fathers. Um, and you know, women hate that. Women re often really hate that, and they they go around and they will say, "Oh, being a mother is a thankless job." This and third, and they guilt trip. Men don't guilt trip. Women, except you know when it's for the box, but <laughs> but when it's besides that, but when it comes to other things, um, we don't guilt trip. We don't guilt trip. We don't say, "Oh man, dads." We we don't openly say being a father's thankless job. Um, we just say, "Hey, it's part of." We always chalk it up to it's part of the game. It's part of being a father, you know. We, shouldn't we change that, man? Shouldn't we say, no, you better damn well give me credit for what I've done for you, boy or girl? Or, or, or we yeah. don't have out. Shouldn't we start putting the pressure on these kids? Like, I'm the one that took you to all those football practices. I'm the one that got out there and cheered for you in the rain. I'm the one that showed you how to balance yourself and how to run, how to tuck the ball, son. Remember that? Yeah. If it wasn't for me, man, you wouldn't be where you are now. You can't at yeah. least give me credit. Shouldn't we begin to tell our children that? Shouldn't that be something we drive into them? From, yeah, from absolutely, absolutely. Um, we we need to bring. It says, "Honor thy father." Screaming, yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know you're right. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in the car accident, call my daddy or turn in Dennis Sperling. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me 713-229-0770. Call my daddy. Daddy, daddy. So, in case you didn't know, there was a, 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 a suspect. Okay, let me move that out the way. Excuse me. Authorities look to the motive of 15-year-old Michigan high school shooting suspect in custody. Here's what we know, okay? School's bell replaced by police sirens Tuesday after a shooting Michigan, after a shooting at Michigan Oxford High School left four students dead. Six other students and a teacher were wounded by gunfire. Six students, right? 
and, and a 15 year old suspect is in custody 15 that's a year older than my oldest boy right <clears throat> his parents were charged with involuntary manslaughter that's the issue that i want to deal with okay we get it the kid brought a gun to school but this is the first time i've seen where a parents were charged with manslaughter okay the parents were charged now i could get it if these were all culprits grown-ups right and, and you're involved in a bank bank robbery and somebody gets shot and everybody gets a second degree murder charge or a first degree murder charge i get that but to me this is groundbreaking when you have the parents being charged with manslaughter they weren't there they weren't present now one district attorney can do it then the rest of them will do it in michigan and what happens you think it would just stop in michigan you see you th you think you think this would just stop in michigan no it won't it won't stop in michigan that's what i'm that's my whole point you know just like the me too uh phenomenon just like the three strikes rule phenomenon lawyers and district attorneys learn from other lawyers and district attorneys across the country many of these statues are identical but the bottom line is basically you're creating a situation uh where it can happen and i can see them using this as a test case in Michigan to see if they can employ this in Detroit when you have a minor who is is out there shooting and killing folk and, and, and whatnot. And they say, well, we're gonna put the parents in jail. We're gonna charge the parents with manslaughter. people don't like these uncomfortable conversations you know what I mean and my whole point is and I think people don't get it if they'll do this to white folks they'll definitely do it to your black behind you understand what I'm you, saying I understand. if white people will do this to other white people they will definitely do it to you you see you what I'm saying right I get you and I don't I, think go ahead no I'm sorry I just had two questions that bother me I don't yeah. know if anybody else in the chat has these questions right there one why are they doing this now after all those school shootings has happened over the I don't know how many years why are they doing this now hey man you, you understand know, it it see here's the thing it's almost like what took him so long yeah, that's what I'm asking. Why yeah. That's why I'm like, I understand yeah. you have a great argument. I like your line of argument. Yeah. It makes sense. But why are they doing it now instead of before? I mean, this has been a problem for a long time. At the Sandy Hook shooting, that should have been a, uh, 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 that should have been a perfect opportunity. They didn't do it then. Why are they doing it now? Well, I, let, let's let's kind of look at the climate of America right now. Okay, uh, I'm all ears. We we've we are definitely divided, damn near at arms. Okay, for political reasons. Okay. okay. And so I don't think this country has been this divided, according to a lot of historians, uh, since, you know, right before the, the Civil War. You okay. See? So right. you got people who are at arms. So you have people who are willing to take risk for their side to push a, a political agenda that they may not have been willing to do 25 years ago when we kind of were getting along a little bit better. Dramatization. After a car wreck, you may have to fight with a highly trained insurance company rep whose job is to knock your damaged claim down and out. It's a bad idea to enter the ring alone against a trained boxer, and it could be a bad idea to fight against a big insurance company by yourself. 
yourself. When the bell rings, attorney Dennis Sperling will be there to fight for your right. If you've been seriously injured in a car wreck, call me, attorney Dennis Sperling, at 866-529-2444. That's 866-529-2444. Then I'll scream and holler some more, saying absolutely nothing. You have a choice in legal representation. And in making that choice, do you want an attorney with a made-for-TV nickname to represent you and your serious car wreck claim? I will growl, kick, and scream. My name is Dennis Sperling. If you've been involved in a motor vehicle accident, contact me toll-free at 866-529-2444. The choice is yours. Hey, what's up, you guys? I want to introduce you all to VK Platinum. I know that's backwards on the screen, but this is what I've been taking. As you guys know, man, I've been dealing with some health issues for a while. But now, as after taking these uh, VK Boost capsules and these other recommended uh, items, I have been able to clear up a lot of congestion, a lot of things that have been ailing me, man. This is a great supplement, black-owned. I appreciate you guys, man, if you would check them out. Uh, you should be able to find the link below uh, in the description section so you can go ahead and order. But make sure you tell them that Uncle D sent you, and that's VK Platinum. Some good, high-quality stuff, man. Check it out. Baby, I am back. This is Uncle D, and I'm back in the saddle. Look, it's been a long week, y'all, but I want to talk to you guys about, uh, and, and the week has just begun. That's what's so cold about it. But look, I want to say what's up to everybody in the chat room. Give me a big thumbs up, big like, hit the number one button. Shout out to uh, all my brothers in the Nation of Islam, Fruit of Islam, all the people who know and love the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. If you heard him speak yesterday, it was uh, definitely a wonderful, wonderful uh, conversation that he had with his audience. Um, and um, it's befitting that we talk about Brother Malcolm X on this last day here of the uh, uh the 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 month designated for black history i believe that black history is 24 7 but considering the conversation that i've been having here on the internet <laughs> since all i've been giving all the smoke to predator pookie and 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 ray ray the cockroach um you know i am i am it's, it's incumbent upon me to have a discussion about Brother Malcolm X because oftentimes, big shout out to my man, Urban Eagle, oftentimes in defending these predator pookies, they will bring up the great Malcolm X. They will try to besmirch his name and say, well, he was a pookie too. He was a predator pookie. And so I have to do this. You know, it's incumbent upon me to do this. I'm the one that got this war kicked off. And the reason being is because, uh, you know, largely it was members of the X generation that made this thug life thing fashionable. You know, matter of fact, we had an artist, Tupac Shakur, who literally coined the term thug life, made it fashionable. 
and the generation since that time have uh, just took it and run with it. But uh, anyway, shout out to Urban Eagle. Shout out to John Thomas. Hit the number one button. Let me know y'all are in the hizzle for shizzle, my nizzle, as Snoop Dogg used to say back in the day. Um, I want to hear what you guys have to say on this topic. topic. But um, And, and I, I want you guys to show your appreciation by hitting the thumbs up button. Only members, okay, only, uh, only subscribers can comment. All right. So if you're not a con if you're not a subscriber, you cannot comment. I want you guys to be able to comment. So what that means is you're gonna have to do what? You're gonna have to subscribe. No subscribe, no comment. So go ahead and make it happen. All right. Go ahead and subscribe now. And in addition to that, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. All right, hit that thumbs up button and let me know. You appreciate what I'm doing. The algorithm hates Uncle D. Last uh, night, I think it was a uh, Sunday night, night before I had 160, uh, uh, 18,660 subscribers, and now it's 18,045. They take my subscribers away. So make sure you hit the number one button. Let me know your appreciation for what I'm doing out here in these YouTube streets. Well, anyway, let's talk about it. Brother Malcolm. Brother Malcolm X and his road to redemption. The gender war has divided black men and women on social, political, and ideological lines to the point that in some circles, there's the idea that we are culture active, actually enemies. Yeah, black men are enemies with black women. That's a strong word, stronger than hate, stronger than disdain, stronger than a lot of things. But here's the thing, whether you subscribe to this unrealistic belief or not, we are unified in one area, and that is our equal disdain for the cockroach roaches of the black community, Pookie the Predator, right? And Ray Ray the Rapist. See, Pookie the Predator and Ray Ray the Rapist, those are generalized broad terms that describes societal nonconformists, usually, but not always, ex-convicts, uh, jobless, unfaithful, ghetto, dregs, incapable of social graces, commitment or gainful employment, the absentee father, baby daddy of unwed mothers, the intimate, the inmate population, the drug dealers, the hustlers on the streets are examples of pookies and ray rays. Now this is the from the Urban Dictionary. That's not my definition for the predator poopies, okay? Just because you're not faithful to your ugly girlfriend, that doesn't make you a pookie or ray ray. That doesn't bother me. Just because you're a little ghetto, just because you don't have a job, you're not a predator pookie. You're not a ray ray to rapist, you see? The thing is, we want to talk about these predators, and they don't like that, all right? Now, that said, among the broad group of pookie and ray rays, is the predator class of pookie, okay? The predator pookie is a traitorous sellout agent of white supremacy, known for his criminal activity in the black community, his predatory criminal activity in the black community. He is a child molester of both boys and girls, okay? He is a dealer of hard drugs, meaning crack cocaine and heroin and he sells it to his own people. In addition, he is a robber. He is the carjacker. He is the thief who preys upon black people. He is the one that destroys the black community wherever it exists. You cannot get away from Predator Pookie. When the black people occupy the inner city, he turned those inner cities into con inner city conclaves, into ghettos with his drugs and his criminality. When black people escape the inner city and move to the suburbs, like a roach that he is, he followed black people, right, who were trying to escape him to the suburbs. And he brought with him that same predatory criminality. Black men and black women, despite our differences, are all in agreement. We do not like this cockroach, Pookie the predator, and Ray Ray the Rapist, and they must be exterminated. 
just like the roaches that they are. However, because criminality and degeneracy is romanticized in the black community, there exists these pookie predator apologists. They often take offense to the attacks made against Pookie the predator. Often they are inclined to defend Pookie uh, the predator because they themselves are Pookie predators. They are their former predator Pookies, or they have friends and family members that are predator Pookies. So just to be clear, most Black Americans have friends and family that are predator Pookies. But the difference is these Pookie predator apologists Instead of shunning the behavior, they defend it, and therefore they are enablers. They are then responsible, partly, for the dysfunction of the Black community and how we suffer. Now, pookie predator apologists are now trying to get an increasingly uh, trying to get increasingly vocal and outraged uh, Black community to forgive these roaches. These, these roaches that, that have raped children and little boys and little girls who sell hard drugs and cocaine and heroin, uh, promote prostitution of young black women and older black women. They're robbing and killing older black men and older black women and children. And in the defense, the predator pookie rationale that they use, right? Right? They try to say that pookie is a warrior. However, Pookie is only concerned about his own self-interest. Pookie, the predator, fights for himself and for profit. Anything he does to support a righteous cause is done for his own criminal self-interest. Case in point, the Italian mafia. They're Italian Pookies, Italian predator Pookies, right? What did they do? They monitored the dockyards in New York for the United States government during World War II, but they did it in exchange for what? for freedom from fear of prosecution. And then guess what they did? They turned right around and murdered John F. Kennedy 20 years later. Check that out. So their act was not one of patriotism. Merely it was merely an act of an ex a furtherance of their criminal enterprises. Same goes for Pookie the Predator. It is logical, it is not logical to think that a person who has spent their entire life preying upon individuals would then turn around and risk his life and liberty to protect those same individuals from harm. It is more logical to believe that the men who work hard, the fathers, the husbands, the men who work all day to provide and protect for their families would give uh, would give rise to the warrior class. Those because they've already proven that they're willing to put their lives on the line for their families. There are black pookie predator apologists and pookie whisperers who defend pookie the predator for the crimes he perpetrates against the black community. They are under the impression that they can convince us that the predator Pookie can be reformed. This is a hard sell considering that these predator Pookies have committed genocide through the sale of hard drugs, knowingly and willingly killing their own people for profit. These same men have raped children, little boys and girls of their own family, leaving them violated and broken and oftentimes to repeat the same atrocities that were done to them upon others. This is Pookie the Predator. And as I said before, and as, as I will say again, these men, these Pookie Predator, these Ray Ray cockroach rapists, they deserve death and they have no redemption from me. Now, here's the more despicable part of what these Pookie whisperers and these Pookie protectors do. In defense, the pookie predator and the pookie apologist will compare these cockroaches to the Honorable El Haj El Malik El Shabazz, also known to you as Brother Malcolm X. I mean, we must stop them. We must stop them from trying to do this. This pookie protection squad is trying to make this horrific comparison. And in their attempt to uplift the rotten image, they are soiling the image of Brother Malcolm X and bringing his legacy down. We should expect as much from these traitorous agents of white supremacy like Pookie the Predator Roach and Pookie's Defense Squad. This is like comparing, what they're doing is like comparing 
a, a, a prince with a golden crown adorned with jewels to a maggot infested pile of elephant shit. The irony being that Malcolm X who was shot to death by predator pookies, traitors paid for by the US government in this regard, would never allow himself to be likened to such cockroaches. Even after he left the side of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the FBI approached him. They came to his home to get him to spy and become a turncoat, and he flat out refused. Unlike Brother Malcolm X, Pookie is a traitor and a sellout and cannot and never be trusted. Someone who has made a profession of preying upon black the Black community's weakest the most vulnerable is a degenerate, while those who come to his defense are nothing better than shit shovelers. Brother Malcolm X, as a young man, did sell drugs. He was a pimp. He did rob and steal. He was placed in jail for many years for his crimes. But while in prison, he discovered the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he studied and made himself a better man, the best man, one of the best men among us. And upon his release from prison as a student minister under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he traveled the nation denouncing his former scandalous, degenerate, genocidal, destructive, toxic activity. He did not attempt to glorify his former activity or gain wealth and notoriety because of his former degenerate behavior. He spoke openly against this harmful, genocidal behavior and in fact converted men who were still involved in that predator pookie lifestyle to become law-abiding hard-working black men by contrast these predator pookies attempt to glorify their former lifestyles or to gain social status and, and reverence from others for their former activities even those who become rappers glorify this lifestyle which has been harmful destructive to the black community as a whole. They are, they are not traveling the nation or the world denouncing their former activities as Brother Malcolm did. Instead, they're attempting to glorify these activities and generate profit from the destruction that they have caused and the genocide that they have, that, that have brought upon the black community. They have not been redeemed. They do not seek redemption. So for them to compare themselves to Brother Malcolm X is not a comparison that we can accept. The same Predator Pookie apologists and Predator Pookie whisperers who attempt to use Brother Malcolm X's past as a shield from chastisement for their unrepentant behavior are ignorant of the fact that the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, has been teaching his followers that the day will come when Pookie the Predator must be put to death for his crimes against the Black community. And I wholeheartedly agree with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the nation of, the, of Islam. In the meantime, and until justice is served, we must make it socially uncomfortable for these pookie the predator cockroaches and these Ray Ray roaches, rapist roaches to continue to romanticize their criminality. It can be done and it will be done, starting in your own homes, with your own family members and extended family members. Strong, decent, hardworking, law-abiding Black men must make it uncomfortable for these cockroaches to exist in any social setting where they find themselves. As fathers, as grandfathers, as brothers, as uncles, as nephews, etc., we must do what? Accept the fact that you are the man, you are the men of the house, and you do not allow any men in your family uh, any any man in your family, any of these people to be predators. Being poor is no excuse to make victims of other black people. We as black men must come forward and use the tools that we have available to exterminate these cockroaches. And, 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 and in the meantime, until justice is served by the just God that we all adhere to and that we all fund the jurisdiction whom we all fall under, until that day comes, we must be socially, make it socially uncomfortable for them. I will be right back. Brothers and sisters, some of these kinds of people we will have to execute. Yes, sir. I mean, I know that I'm born to do that. I mean, I've known this for years 
And that aspect of my life frightened me. But I've grown accustomed to it now. That there are people among us that we will absolutely chop their heads completely from their bodies yes, for the betrayal of black people. Male and female. And you will know when this kind of activity is carried out, you will understand that it's justified if we prove against you that you are a traitor against your people. This is why if you're selling dope, you must cut it out. Because this is a traitorous act. This is not a good thing to sell drugs to your people. This is not a good thing. It is not a good thing to have this little young girl here, beautiful little child in front of me, 10 years old, or these beautiful young men with their little hands swollen because of heroin, because some of you love money more than you love the life of your people and the well-being of your people. I'm telling you, and I, I don't mind broadcasting it in the future, we will kill you for this. We're not worried about the white man and his law. When we come to that position in time that we have to execute you for selling drugs, then we will carry out the sentence of death on you just like drinking water and hang your head on a pole in the black community terrorize it. This is how we're going to take care of dope sellers. I'm warning you. Oh, nigga, you talking stuff. No, it must come to pass because you're killing yourself and you're killing our people and it's absolutely unnecessary. These things will be punished. And that kind of law, we're going to call for it ourselves. You are not going to take these little young girls and make them prostitutes. You, you're just not going to do that. And you don't have to tell me that our little young girls are fine. I know they're fine. But you're going to keep yourself away from these fine little girls. And we're going to let them grow up to be fine for whoever the man in their life will be. We will not be around plucking them. Serious business now, brother. You don't make whores out of your little daughters. Penalty is death. Rape, death. We ain't asking nobody to, to uh, deal with you. We're going to deal with you ourselves. You don't rape no black woman. You don't rape no woman, black or white. But you don't rape a woman. But that's a terrible thing. Rape, violating a woman like that, brother? You're not going to live to be repenting. No, 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 no. You got a bad habit? You just have to rape women? Oh, no. No, you'd be better off feeding the worms. Don't you think so, sister? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. That's right. He was right about that. Big shout out to the honorable. I can't even say shout out, man. Thank you so much for all your service to the black community, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And uh, some of you guys, you talk about Malcolm X, but many of you guys don't even know anything about Malcolm X. So what we're going to do on this day, this, this last day of, uh, of uh, Black History Month, and even though Black History is year-round, we're going to just talk a little bit about the brother, okay? Brother Malik El-Hajj uh, Shabazz, became, he became Malcolm Little in May 19 or oh, he was May 1925 and he died on February 21st 1965. He was an African American Muslim minister and human rights activist. Um, 
who was a prominent figure during the civil rights movement, a spokesperson, a spokesman for the Nation of Islam until 1964. He was a vocal advocate for black empowerment and promotion of Islam within the black community. Malcolm spent his adolescence living in a series of foster homes or with relatives after his father's death and his mother's hospitalization. He engaged in several illicit activities, individuals uh, eventually being sentenced to 10 years in prison in 1946 for larceny and breaking and entering. In prison, he joined the Nation of Islam, adopting the name Malcolm X to symbolize his unknown African ancestral surname. And after his parole in 1952, right? So he spent, how long was he in prison, right? From 19, what, uh, 46 to 1952. So he's in prison for six years. Quickly became one of the organization's most influential leaders. He was the public face of the organization for dozens of years, advocating for black empowerment and separation of the black, uh, of black and white Americans and criticizing Martin Luther King and the mainstream civil rights movement for emphasis on nonviolence and racial integration. Malcolm X also expressed pride in some of the nation's social welfare, welfare achievement, see, achievements, such as its free drug re rehabilitation program. So they weren't selling drugs. They were trying to get black people off of drugs. And this is these are the things that what? These are the things that Malcolm X pushed. So he went from a drug dealer to a person who was rehabbing people off drugs. This is not a pooky predator. And at the time when he was, guess what? He undid the harm or began, spent the rest of his life trying to do the, un, the harm he undid. He wasn't sitting up on hundreds of millions of dollars and telling people how, yeah, you know, I did what I had to do. And, you know, who are you to judge me? He didn't do that. He undid the crimes. He undid the things that he, uh, he began to undo the things that he had caused, the harm he had caused. That's not what these roaches out here doing. They still out there cutting up and committing crimes. Hit the number one button. Let me know you're in the house and make sure you check in. In 1960, Malcolm X began to grow delusion with the Nation of Islam, as well as with the leader Elijah Muhammad. He subsequently, now this is Wikipedia. This is this is uh, definitely something the white folks put together. You know what I'm saying? He subsequently embraced Sunni Islam and the civil rights movement after com completing the Hajj to Mecca and became known as El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. After a brief period of travel across Africa, he publicly renounced the Nation of Islam and founded the Islamic Muslim Mosque Incorporated and the Pan-African Organization of Afro-American uh, Unity, U-A-A-U, O-A-A-U. Throughout, the 19, throughout 1964, his conflict with the Nation of Islam intensified and he was repeatedly sent death threats. On February 21st, 1965, he was assassinated in New York City. Three nation, three na nation members were charged with the murder and given indeterminate life sentences. In 2021, two of the convicted convict convictions were vacated. Speculation about the, the assassination and whether it was conceived or aided by leading or additional members of the Nation of Islam or with law enforcement agencies have persisted for decades after the shooting. A controversial figure accused of preaching racism and violence, Malcolm X is also widely celebrated for a figure within African American and Muslim American communities for his pursuit for racial justice. He was posthumous, posthumously honored with Malcolm X Day on which he is commemorated in various cities across the United States. Hundreds of the streets and schools in the U.S. have been renamed in his honor, while the Autobahn Ballroom, the site of his assassination, was partly redeveloped in 2005 to accommodate Malcolm X and Betty Shabazz Memorial Educational Center. Now, this, is, of course, is the story of Malcolm X, and basically his mother was from uh, Granada. She was West Indian. His father was Black American from Georgia. Um, he was... Uh, his father was a Garveyite. All of these things you could read. His father was apparently killed by the Ku Klux Klan for creating problems and uh, um, uh, up there and in, in, in where they're from. Uh, Malcolm, at some point, he started drug dealing, gambling, racketeering, robbery, and pimping. He got caught. He went to jail. 
He stayed there for six years. He converted to Islam uh, he, with, through the help of a brother named uh, Bembry. You know, he met a fellow convict in there. So that, that, that brought him to Islam. So here's the thing. People try to compare Brother Malcolm to these pooky predators. They try to use that, but all they're doing is tearing down their our brother's uh, legacy in order to try to save themselves. And that's not acceptable. I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is a conversation that all of us need to have. This is not a lecture. So I want to hear what you brothers have to say about this. I think, you know, if you're here with me now, you understand where I'm coming from, right? Now, is there redemption? Is there a narrow path of redemption for these pooky predators? Huh? Is there? The answer is yes. Do they deserve death? Yes. But is there no path for them? I'm not talking about all of them. Some people just can't be redeemed. Some just can't. Some people you just can't be redeemed. The Lord is going to have to do it. But the link is in the chat room. Let's have this conversation. It's long overdue. You talk about Brother Malcolm, you bring Brother Malcolm, are you doing what Brother Malcolm did when you compare yourself to Brother Malcolm? Are you? Brother Malcolm denounced his former lifestyle everywhere he had the opportunity to. That's what Brother Malcolm X did. But most of these predator pookies, they're not, dem they're not dem denouncing the drug dealer. They're not, they're not coming up with... Uh, rehab facilities. That's not what they're doing. They're thriving off their reputation. They're bragging on it. That's what they're doing. That's not that they're, they're not they're not walking around saying what I did in the past was wrong and it was genocidal, it was, it was traitorous. No, they they lauding it. As if it was something good. So that's the difference between them and brother Malcolm. Is there a road to redemption for these pooky predators? Yes, there is. But it's a narrow road. And it's a hard road to travel because you may have to give your life for the salvation of black people to do what? To compensate for the damage that you caused. And I don't see any of these drug dealers and these folks out here that have caused so much harm. They're not giving their life for black folks. They're just getting richer making more songs about it, doing more business deals. And that includes all of them. That's what they're doing. The link is in the chat room. I want to hear what y'all have to say. I'm going to take a quick commercial. I'll be right back. The ongoing pandemic and its emerging variants have become urgent. Building the most powerful immune system using all natural ingredients is critical. VK Platinum and VK Boost are formulated to deliver a broad spectrum of over 7,000 nutrients, antioxidants, phytonutrients, key amino acids, and active enzymes, including the highest levels of all natural vitamin C, which optimize the cellular capacity to destroy pathogens. And now joining the VK Platinum team includes Flush Me Out of THC, Sex Mate for Men, Silent Flowers for Women, Lean and Clean for Digestive Health, Bull Gorge for male prostate health, and 10X Boost Optimal Botanical Nutrition Mineralization. To build the most powerful immune system immediately and overall nutrition, go to PlatinumVK.com. Hey. hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, Hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. All right, so we're back. So I want to go over a couple of quotes that from Malcolm X, and um, it will just show you just how loving and understanding of a person Brother Malcolm was. But before I do that, I want to take you guys to this. This is a secret recording. Because see, part of my problem with these pooky the predators is that they've already proven that they have a price. If they sell you out once for drugs, they'll sell you out again. That's what we know about sellouts and traders. The drug dealer is the biggest sellout in the black community. He turns, he, he sells dope to his own people for profit, right? Now here, check this out. And so 
this was after Brother Malcolm left the uh, the side of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And what you have is these two federal agents came to his house. Let me know if y'all can hear this. Hit the number one button. Morning. How you doing? For the FBI, you have a couple of minutes left talking. Your name is uh, Backwood. Backwood, right? And your name is Fulton. Fulton, right? From which uh, New York? New York. There's only uh, there's only one. Only. Can y'all hear it? One here. This is probably what you uh, assume we we came for to obtain any information you want to give us about the Muslims. Uh, I don't assume anything. No. <laughs> I, that's a very general statement on my part, but uh, as you know, uh, we follow the activities of the Muslims as best we can. But we're always looking for new avenues of information, and who better than uh, you know than the heads of the Muslims? Uh, at least up to a month ago or something. Uh, how's your suspension status? Uh, no one knows, but can you brothers hear clearly? Can y'all hear clearly? Let me know if you can hear Brother Malcolm talking to the FBI. Mr. Muhammad, you have to ask. You're still in, in the status of now. Uh, I mean, you're not, you're, still, you're not working now uh, or teaching now at all. Uh, we well, are still in the suspension. That's what I'm <laughs> That's a temporary thing, uh, as far as we know. So he's, the, he's the only one who can give out any information. I, mean, I wouldn't, I couldn't say anything beyond what he has said. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think he has said that it's a temporary system. Uh, one of the, I'll, I'll be frank with you, one of the, one of the reasons we picked this, we picked this particular time to uh, contact him is because of this suspension. The suspension was brought about by my own doing. Yeah, exactly. But uh, who knows what was in your mind when you did receive the suspension. In other words, bitterness could have entered into it. It would not be illogical for someone to have spent so many years doing something that'd be, that'd be suspended. No, it should make him stronger because it makes yeah. him realize that uh, uh, law applies to the law enforcer as well as those who are under the enforcement of the enforcer. You see how they're trying to get him to turn against his teacher, Brother Malcolm? Uh, it's not turning against the Honorable Elijah Bob. You see how they try? I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Where at least it would reform the people that have been made criminal by this society, by the corruption of this society. And any way to help it out other than that, I wouldn't even know how to begin. Well, what we're interested in, uh, basically, are the people who belong, the names, the members. My telephone number is OL16320. Well, without getting into my own somatics there, you don't know until you ask. Well, that's the man who uh, again, goes into your psychology. We've had people, at, uh, not this group in particular, other groups. Oh, yes. Who have been just as vociferous against what we're ever we're investigating as a communist. Make that make a good case mm -hmm. out of it. Communists for 20 years, you know, they hate everything. Uh, go into the yeah. They don't want to go anyway. So you want to Basically, what Malcolm, brother Malcolm, tells us said, y'all should know me better than no. Don't even ask me to sell out. So whatever he did in the past, his activities in the past, he at this point has become a totally new, different person. And that's not what we get from these pooky the predators. They basically want you to accept them how they are, as they are, not to change. And we can't trust those type of people. Where we're going is black men and, and black women and black families in the black community you got to get rid of them and we and, and and since the law won't let us do them like they need to be done and give them the justice that that, that that they that their crimes deserve we have to socially ostracize them now i know you guys are not coming in that's cool i don't have a problem with that i still need you to hit the number one button 
go ahead and hit the number one button if you haven't already. Right now, I'm not going to be leaving the point. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Y'all get the point of where I'm coming from. I've been talking about this poopy the predator, uh, Ray Ray the cockroach business for a minute. Y'all get it now. All right. You understand just where I'm coming from. This is not talking about blue collar workers, poor people. This is not who we're talking about. We're talking about predators of the black community. And those are the type of people that make our communities unsafe. Those are the type of people that make us unsafe. And those are the type of people that we need to get rid of. Stop trying to hide yourself behind Brother Malcolm X's legacy. All you're doing is soiling his legacy, trying to lift yourself up. You are not the same as this man. This man gave his life for the liberation of black people in America and the world. That's what he fought for. He could have went quietly somewhere in the dark, disappeared, said nothing, but that's not what he did. He kept fighting. You guys aren't fighting. You poopy the predators. You just chilling. You just chilling and, 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 and sitting on top of your laurels. Some money, some reputation, some both. But the bottom line is that day is over. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to be leaving the point. I appreciate you guys. Shout out to my man, W. Alfonso, Urban Eagle. Thank you so much for the contribution. I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Y'all hear what I'm saying. And to all you pooky predators out there, the road to redemption is a long, hard one. But it's the only path that you have. I'm out.